In today's video, I'm sharing my frustrations. So I'm drinking some coffee this morning and I'm looking through my portfolio and I'm just frustrated and irritated and I can't even describe how frustrated I am with put spreads, AKA risk-defined trades. They drive me insane and I'm done with them. I have two put spreads still in action and I wanna get rid of them as soon as I can close them I'm not looking back. I'm never going back to risk-defined trades. If you're an options trader and you're not sure if you should use risk-defined trades or undefined trades, this video is for you. So let's go. Okay, sorry for the super intense intro. I'll tone it down just a little bit. But what I wanna talk about today are risk-defined trades and undefined trades, the differences between them, why one is better than the other. I wanna talk a little bit about the pros and cons, and then I wanna give you some specific examples. I'm actually gonna go into my trading platform and I'm gonna to try to roll a risk-defined trade, and then I'm gonna to try to roll an undefined trade or a full risk trade. Basically, a put spread versus a naked put. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do one of them and how hard it is to do the other, and I'm gonna show you in the platform so you can actually see the dollar amounts so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So to keep things pretty simple, let's just call our risk-defined trade, let's just deal with put spreads. So a put spread is when you sell a put and you buy a put. So you're gonna sell the put for say $5 and you're gonna buy a put for say $3 and then you keep the $2 credit, five minus the three. Now, that sounds great because now you know that if you go $5 wide, say your put spread is 130 by 125 and the stock's trading at say 150. I'm gonna show you this in example in just a second, but it's a $5 wide put spread. You know you can't lose more than $500 for each one lot, for each 100 shares that you put on. So one contract, $500 risk, that can't change. If you get blown out to the bottom and the stock drops to $50, you can only lose a max amount of $500 minus the credit that you received when you put the spread on or when you sold the put spread. Now on the flip side, when you look at the naked put that's an undefined risk trade, let's say you do the same thing. You sell the 130 put, the stock's trading at 150, but now you don't have to buy the put. So let's say that in the, in the first example, you sold the put for $5, you bought the put for $2. So now when you sell that put for $5, you automatically keep the $5. So you get $500 in your pocket instead of $200 with the put spread. And now your break even is $5 lower than where you put it on. So your break even would be 125. In the put spread example, your break even would be 128 because you just collected a $2 credit because you had to pay $3 for the put that you bought for the downside protection, right? You're starting to see where I'm going with this. A little less collection means a little less cost basis reduction, a little less padding. The kicker's coming up though, it gets worse. So now let's just say you let a few weeks go by, everything's great, you're happy about your trade, everything's trading above that 130 mark and then you wake up one morning and it drops. Now the stock's trading at 110. Okay, you're saying to yourself, I put on a put spread. I lost $500 max, maybe. What do I do? Now, over on the risk undefined area, you put on the put and that's it. You sold the put, you got blown out to the downside. So now you're saying, okay, now it's at 115, I'm down $15 if I get put the shares. So that's $1,500. This is terrible. Why would you ever sell a naked put? Well, here's the problem. Now it's time to roll your trade. You're 21 days out from expiration. Prime rolling time in terms of inflection in time decay. I like to follow a tasty trade approach to it. So at 21 days, I make my decision. You're getting ready to roll. You roll the put spread. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Uh-oh, can't do it. You try again, uh-uh, can't do it. It won't roll. You're gonna have to pay to roll it. I'm stuck, I can't move my put spread. All I can do is just sit here and watch it. And oh, wait, wait, things are perfect today. The stars aligned. I was able to collect five cents. Oh, good, five cents to put three more weeks of time, extrinsic value into the trade. Good for you. Oh 
but you couldn't roll that trade down. You couldn't move it down, so it's at the same place. Now, on the evil side, the naked put, you're looking at that naked put, you go to roll it, you're gonna add three weeks of extrinsic value. Oh, I could get paid $3 for this instead of a nickel. I'm gonna make $300 just to sit there at the same strike, lowering my cost basis by three more dollars. So now, the original $5 that you got when you sold the put, plus the three you just got for the roll, I think I just spit, is $8, $8. So you get $8 now of cost basis reduction versus $2 and five cents for the put spread. Now this is gonna blow your mind, so make sure that if you're standing, please sit down. So, in the example of the naked put, let's say you could collect $3 and you decide, boy, I really got blown out to the downside. I wish I could move my put strike down to kind of chase the price. That way I could increase the chances of price going back above my naked put. Guess what? You can. You add time value back, you get $3 to go ahead and roll. Well, what if you gave up two of those dollars? and rolled your position down. So now, instead of the 130 put, you put on a 125 put, and you give up two of those dollars, and maybe you keep one dollar. So you rolled down five dollars, still got paid a hundred dollars because it's one dollar per share for a hundred shares in one contract. So now you're sitting nice and pretty. You're five dollars closer to the action. So instead of being at the 130 like you are in the put spread, now you're down at 125. And you can continue to do this rinse and repeat and lower your position every three to four weeks and chase the stock down waiting for it to then get back above you. The minute it's back above you, you just, there's the end of the day, end of the market. You just wait, you just wait for it to get it back above you and then you just sit tight, you can let it expire or when it gets far enough above your naked put, you can close it. And this is gonna lead me into my last point before we jump into some examples. If you want to go ahead and close out your naked put versus your put spread, there's a whole other can of worms there because to close out your put spread, you can imagine the put that you bought is like dragging a, a tractor tire tied around your waist while you're trying to walk down the street. You won't be able to close until it's two, three times higher than it needs to be with a naked put. With the naked put, you start to get back above your put spread, time starts to decay down, and if you get a little push to the upside, a lot of times you'll hit 50%, close it out. But on the put spread side of things, you're gonna have to wait for it to go above, time to come down, it to go higher, it to go higher, time to go down, it to go higher, and then even at this point, you, if you're lucky, you might be able to take it off. Now again, this is assuming that we sold both of these scenarios in high volatility, and we let volatility contract, all right? We're assuming that for both. Selling these both in environments of greater than 40% IV rank. So, when you're comparing apples to apples on these things, the put spread is like tying a weight to your waist and then swimming across the lake, whereas a put is like frolicking in a field of flowers barefoot, just prancing around because it's fantastic. All right, I now wanna take you to the charts. Sorry for my extreme behavior. Let's go. All right, so I've got Target up on the daily chart, and I'm gonna show you the perfect example of why the put spread is always stuck in the mud and why the naked put just works. So these lines I have drawn out, you can see 110 by 90. So this is the put spread that I currently have on. It's got a 110 put that I sold and it has a 90 put that I bought for the downside protection. So you can see in this example, it's a $20 wide spread. And if I come over to the trade tab and you look in here, you can see, let's find my position right here. So if I open up June 19th, so right here, you can see that the positions, this green one, that's the put that I bought. You can see that's the 90 put. And let's just say that that's trading for, we won't go with mid prices on this. We'll just take the prices here and, and show you. But um, let's go with 110 is, so if you wanted to buy this back right now to close, it would be $5.75 
to buy it back. Now, this put over here, you can sell that. So I could sell that for $1.15. So if I subtract $1.15 from that, we're looking at $4.60 to close this position out. Now, I'm gonna come over to my monitor tab and I'm gonna go to target, 90 strike by 110. If I click roll this order, I'm gonna move myself out of the way. So if I try to roll this order right now, I try to roll from June to July, a whole month ahead, a whole month of extrinsic value, I can get 44 cents, 41 cents on the mid price, okay? So let's say I try to move it. I try to move it to 105 by 85. I just try to move it down. Now I'm paying a dollar, I'm paying 91 cents. So I can either take 41 cents profit and move it a month, or I can roll it down and pay almost $100. So now I'm gonna cancel this out. So that was the put spread, okay? So I delete that out. Okay, now after showing you that put spread, I wanna show you just a straight naked put that I have in another stock, and that one is Ulta, right here. You can see 235 put. So if I go to the stock chart and I just show you Ulta real quick, you can see I'm actually in the money. So 235 is right up here and the stock price is below. So I've actually been blown out by Ulta. You can see we were way down here, but watch what I can do with Ulta. This is the power of it. So if I come to my monitor tab and I go to Ulta and I click on here and I say roll this order, the 235 put, and now let's say I want to try to catch up with the price. I want to try and get below it. The stock's trading at like 229 and change. I want to go ahead and get below it. So if I roll my position from June out to the next available, which is September. Now, granted, this is already out, you know, I've already rolled it to June, so I'm kind of showing you this. Normally, I would wait longer before rolling. I would get closer to the expiration date. But just for the sake of the example, I rolled a September from June, and you can see my credit would be $10.85 that I would keep if I just left the strike the same. I didn't change anything. But let's say I really want to lower my strike and try to catch up with the price action. So it's trading at 229. So I say, okay, what's 230 like? Let's go down $5. Well, look at that. I'm still collecting 835. I paid a little bit of my premium I would have collected, a couple bucks, but now I'm down five bucks. Now I want to go, okay, let's get truly below it. Let's go to 225. So I do that. Perfect. Now I'm actually below the current price of the stock. I'm out of the money and I'm gonna collect $5.95 just to sit tight and see what happens. Now let's say I get blown out again. I can just keep repeating this process and chasing that stock down until I get that move back above where then I can just wait and then hopefully close for 50% profit on my premium. And that is the power of the naked option. So like always, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, it helps the algorithm and it helps my channel. Subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you as part of the Taking Trades community, and we'll see you next time.